What's going on boys? How you doing? Ginger, Andrew, Nils, G Money, Ricky. Um <clears throat> welcome. So this morning I said uh we were due for a bounce. Thank you, G Money, appreciate that, bro. Um so this morning I said we were due for a bounce. Why did I say we we're due for a bounce? Just because the four hour gets a little oversold. So, like you guys know, I look at patterns a lot, especially the four hour patterns, and a lot of the time in the past, almost every single time. What's up, Cordell? How you doing? Yeah, we're gonna have a fun week. Every week's fun. You know, yesterday was fun. Today was fun. Um, <clears throat> I hope you guys caught the support uh, resistance uh, short there, but uh, Discord went down, or else I would have been screaming it on Discord. That was one of the most high confidence plays I had in a while. Um, so basically, I just go on the spy chart. You go on the four hour chart right here, and all you have to do is go back in history. Look at look at the last four or five months. Right. This is the RSI down here. Under 30 is oversold, over 70 is overbought. So we go back here almost every single time we've had oversold or even near oversold. SPY goes on at least an 8-hour rally almost every single time. So right here, RSI oversold, 8-hour rally or 1 or 2-day rally, dumped it right back down. <clears throat> and uh, just go back in history. You can go way farther than this. Obviously, I'm not going to go all the way back. But you guys see right here, RSI got oversold. Look at this. Uh, 12 hour rally over here, almost oversold rally rally. So basically what I'm saying to you guys is spy four hour oversold on the RSI is a very high probability setup and we are getting right back down there. So you guys see, this was the last time we were oversold on RSI. The RSI was down at 19 when we invaded or when Russia invaded Ukraine. What's up Darsh? Um, I think we'll open red. So let's just go over the and that's the analysis I'm doing right now. So four hour last time on February 24th when Russia invaded Ukraine, the RSI went all the way down to 19. Look how they bounced it, guys. A war just started that that almost like basically could be World War Three, but the spy four hour was oversold, so they had to bounce it. What's up, Gravinder? How you doing? Huge bounce straight from the bottom when it was oversold, and then they cooled off the RSI. They cooled it off, and then they dumped it right back down. And now we're getting very, very close to oversold levels. That's why I said there's a high chance of a bounce today and tomorrow because the four hour RSI is so oversold. So what we're looking for right now is it was 33 back here and now we're down at 31. If we get a small more, like if we get a gap down tomorrow on SPY, this is very key. I'm going to tell you something right now. If we get a gap down tomorrow on SPY, I will probably exit most of my shorts and get long just for this little spy 8 12 hour bounce and then I'll re-add the same shorts that I saw in the morning. So that's my ideal situation is a gap down tomorrow morning where I'll get out of most of my shorts if not all my shorts, I'll get long <clears throat> and then I'll try to time my entry back into those shorts after a big bounce. So that's my exact plan for tomorrow. If it doesn't work out like that, if we gap up tomorrow, I'll probably just add to my shorts because a gap up would cool off the RSI. It would make this play no good anymore. We'd have to make a different game plan. So that's my plan for tomorrow. Some free education for people that aren't in my stock life. You guys probably make a lot of money tomorrow. Um, QQQ, much of the same thing. Um, if you guys go to the four hour, I love using four hour charts, guys. It's amazing. And you can just do the same thing. Whenever RSI is way overdone, February 24th, the invasion, look at the rip we got. For no reason at all, like a country, a superpower was invading another country. The only reason we got it was technical. So these are all algos that start buying when SPY gets oversold. That's why I was confident that we would get a bounce today. We did get the bounce, but the bears just, I mean, the bulls just completely fumbled the ball. So look at this rip. Like we had this very clear lower high lower low pattern going and then all of a sudden they drop news on us why did they drop news on us because we were getting oversold guys like the technicals match so they dropped the news right as soon as they dropped the news huge rip we went right up to my level of four like almost to the dot um right at 41.80 42.80 sorry ripped straight from the low of the day which was a double bottom straight to the high of the day and then they dropped news that russia was not doing exports anymore okay Russia is not doing exports anymore means the a lot of the countries are in trouble and now Serbia banned exports as well on a bunch of stuff so this is turning into like a global war and it's more economical than a world war so world war 3 is probably going to be an economical war instead of a hand to hand war or a nuclear war it's more economical financial I'll go into my opinions right now it, uh, but it's going to take too long it's another story for another time XLF uh 
just getting destroyed people are hating financials when money starts coming like this out of financials it's definitely a time to worry stuff like this kind of downtrend on financials which are supposed to be safe dividend paying stocks i mean last time was covid time before that was 2018 when they were raising rates time before that was 2018 at the beginning of the year i mean when financials they start running away from financials and look at the volume that they're running away with it from so that's a very clear sign that uh, the market's weak. If you need another weakness sign, there's like a hundred signs right now. IWM supposed to lead us back up if the market wants to rally. Doesn't look like anything right now. Looks like a bunch of chop between 206.50 and 188. I don't think it's going anywhere either. Thursday's inflation numbers. Who's going to get bullish in front of those inflation numbers with oil this high, with bread costing that much, with gas costing that much? No one big is going to get in front of that number bullish in my opinion vix keeps just rising steady this line has held ever since we drew it back here in february vix has never lost it if vix closes the daily under this line i'm gonna get really long most likely most likely if the vix closes a daily candle below this little support line that it's held all the way up that's when i get long and i start buying equity as well other than that, SPX, uh, the levels were given to you in the morning, as G Money stated. Uh, these levels worked almost perfectly today. I, I looked at them a lot. The one number that was probably wrong is 4140. I'm just going to adjust that right here. We'll see how they play out tomorrow, but I'd say 4160 is more important now. So you can change that 4140 to 4160. If we lose 4140, then I don't think uh, we're going to stop at 4140 either. So it's very clear. Look at this, almost a perfect head and shoulders. But uh, this was this play that I was waiting for all day. And of course, Discord was down when this play came. So all I was saying was they're going to rip this market. The double bottom Yush called probably a rip. And uh, I agreed with him just because we had a double bottom. And it absolutely ripped. 4280, I said there would be some kind of bad news that came out that sent the market back down. Exactly what played out. Exactly V-shape right back down. Little bear flag and then dump it to the low of the day at the end of the day. Very weak close. Nothing bullish about this action at all. This was the day that bulls could have taken back control. They just simply ran out of steam. Like It's very obvious. V-shape back down. Usually in a bull market will V-shape back up. In a bear market will V-shape right back down. So keep an eye on these levels again tomorrow. If anything changes overnight, I'll let you know. But for right now, these are very, very important levels. Under 4160 would probably be 4140 and then lower. Over 4280, bulls take control. As long as we're under 4280, I do not think we're going to get any kind of sustainable bounce. So 4280 is the main number right now. And in between, you can easily scalp them. Like, look at this. Uh, in the morning, obviously, my number was off at the bottom, but once we started ripping, we just diced through my first resistance. Second resistance, we stopped for about 10 minutes and then ripped through, and third resistance was a top. On the way down, just sliced right through those res previous resistances, came up, and then we started rejecting here again. So there's an easy short here. HR nailed spy puts right here. I, did, I missed them here, but I nailed them here. Um, HR absolutely timed this one perfectly, came straight down into the end of the day and close near the low of day. So it's very easy to follow these levels. If I send them in the morning, just uh, make sure you mark them up and watch them. Uh, Bitcoin still kind of just sideways slacking. But again, we are well above the February 24th low. So we had the low in January 24th. The invasion was a higher low. And then the previous low was even in higher low. So Bitcoin's making a, a higher low pattern. Now we need a higher high. If Bitcoin gets above 45,821, 45,821, then Bitcoin's putting in higher lows and higher highs and bulls have back in control. If we get over 40, I'm just going to mark that off for myself as well. I am holding a little bit of stuff. 45,821. So that's what we need on Bitcoin to confirm the bulls have changed this daily trend. Why do I say that about Bitcoin and not about SPY? SPY has not put in a higher low. So basically Jan 24th was a low. February 24th took out that low, and now it looks like we're going even lower. This is an inverted hammer, which is the most bearish candlestick that you can find. So, SPY is a lot weaker than Bitcoin. And uh, if Biden's, yeah, exactly, if Biden's announcement is anything good about crypto, I think crypto is going to start ripping.
just because of the higher lows that it's putting in like right now it's very obvious that it's stronger than the market and if it un if it stops correlating with the market i think bitcoin has a chance to run bns i'm just gonna go over a couple of uh newer puts there's no reason to go over all my puts um it's gonna take a long time bns i called yesterday why did i call it out so let's just explain so you guys when you guys scan charts if you guys find a play like this or something that you like maybe we can all bank on it right so first of all bns look at this macd on the weekly is crossing down first of all that's a weekly looks very toppy on the daily as well we have a gap to fill down to 69.50 looks like we rejected almost a triple top here definitely a double top almost a triple top rejected and we have a gap to fill the 69.50 so why did i take this trade what am i planning on doing this trade so my game plan personally for this trade i wanted to let it dump until we fill this gap to 69.50 these puts that i took yesterday will probably be 150 to 200 percent when we gap fill down there so after i get those i get my 200 percent profits let's say i make 10k on that trade I take that 10K, I put 5K back in, I'm gonna roll into 68 or $65 puts for farther out. So that's my plan on BNS right now. Whenever you get in a trade, you should have a plan definitely. And that's just my plan for now. Let's see how long it takes to gap fill. If it fills tomorrow, I'll probably have 200% on those puts. I'll take half or one third of the profit and I'll roll it out into farther strike. So that's how I'm gonna play that one out. ENPH, I told you guys six times, oil is higher, commodities are higher, look for alternative energy. There's about four names I know for alternative energy, but the favorite one was ENPH all day. Look right off the open. I took the 170s. Didn't have enough time to call it out. Sorry, guys. Don't go on voice first thing in the morning. I have positions to manage, but I grabbed the 170s at $2.90. Sold those for 100%. Those ones ended up going 500% today. So even if you just read my comment in the morning, you could have taken the wrong option and you still would have made 600, 700% on these. Um, one of my friends <clears throat> actually chased them. He, he got them at 350 he sold them at 10 and then he rolled into the 180s and he made money on those as well. So just remember if I say something, I'm not just talking, you know what I mean? There's something behind it and especially like ENPH in a market this week, ENPH was up 11% today, guys. Run. And I've been saying this all week as well. Run is another runner, 9% up today. And the charts look like they're set up to run for a while. No pun intended. Said G, another one. Look at this. 10.5% today. So it's just very, very calm, like easy. I told you exactly what's going to happen. Oil is higher. Look at the ETF for solar was up 9.3% today. So this was very obviously the way, the place to get bullish if you wanted to get bullish today. And uh, just keep an eye on this ENPH. It's a monster of a company. It beats earnings almost every single time. And uh, keep an eye on this one. It's setting up to go. UPS was the last short. I think it was the last short I put on for a swing. Uh, Bookie pointed this one out to me actually in the chat. He took uh, April very close to the money, I think 195s. But I didn't want to put that much capital in there, so I just took a little farther out. So I took 180s or 185s or something. I have so many shorts, I don't even remember. But basically, UPS, I gave you guys the play on the voice chat. Um, they're stopping operations in Russia. Oil and gas are more expensive. Charts look like trash. Their bottom line is going to get hit hard by all this uh, increasing oil and gas prices. And it looks like weekly is very toppy on this. So I did think this one was going to rip. When the market looked bullish, we looked like we had an inverse head and shoulder ready to go. But it's proved there's just too much stuff going on outside. There's too many outside headwinds, headlines. And the 50, if we close below the 50-day on Friday, which is at 202.37, a close on Friday below 202 i think ups can go all the way down to the 200 day which is at 142 i know that's 60 points away i know you guys probably think i'm crazy but we have till april 14th and check out its main competitor this is fedex guys and fedex on the weekly is below its 200 day moving average so it's not wild to think that ups can go down there as well look at the daily so this is fedex as well i missed this short vlad pointed it out to me Look at this daily pattern, head and shoulders breakdown. Look where we went all the way down here. <clears throat> I think that was COVID. Yeah. So even while well, it is during COVID, but look what it did before COVID. It just completely dumped, right? And we have that exact same pattern playing out now. So where do we go from here? Much, much lower is possible on FedEx and UPS. So keep that in mind. 
Um, I'm perfectly comfortable in all my shorts. The only one that scared me was CLF. And CLF scared me because we had outside headlines. The, the war news and everything. If the war got worse, CLF would have probably kept running short squeezing. Today we got our pullback. We all got out about uh, nice gains. Not the best, but nice gains. But the thing I realized with CLF as well is when the VIX came down today, those puts lost value. So when the VIX was doing this, CLF was also coming down. But CLF puts were losing a ton of value. And the reason for that, the, what I'm saying is the CLF will go up a lot and spike when the VIX is spiking because there's volatility uncertainty from the war. So if the war news comes, VIX goes up, CLF goes up. If there's good stuff like the war is ending or something, the VIX will come down, CLF will come down, but our puts will lose up. Uh, our puts will lose value even though CLF is coming down. So that's what I realized about it today. I got out of it. I'm happy. We made our gains. Uh, everyone in the group got out at the right time, I think. So congrats, and uh, let's find some more plays tomorrow. Thank you guys for attending. I'll see you tomorrow.